Hello and welcome. My name is Thomas Court, and I'd like to share with you the results of my Google Summer of Code project for BeagleBoard.org. I'm going to begin by detailing the features I developed that were merged into the official Minix code repository. The main focus of my project was the ITC bus and various ITC devices. Fairly early on in the project, I had a working ITC bus driver for the BeagleBone Black, BeagleBoard, XM, and the original BeagleBone White. As the project progressed, I developed a few other drivers for the BeagleBone's system on chip, the AM335X, to support my ITC-related work. I wrote a real-time clock driver, which was needed for triggering the power off via the ITC-controlled power management chip. I ported the general-purpose input-output library, which was needed to turn on some of the expansion boards. Additionally, I added a kernel call for padconf. Uh, that's needed to configure multifunction pins for specific peripherals. This was a prerequisite for the ITC driver. The BeagleBone Black and BeagleBoard XM each have a dedicated power management IC called the PMIC, which is attached to the ITC bus. The driver I developed for the BeagleBone Black's PMIC, the TPS65217, allows the operating system to power off the board. It also allows the power button to trigger safe shutdown in the operating system. The driver for the BeagleBoard XM's power management IC, the TPS65950, implements the real-time clock for the board. I also developed drivers for a few ITC sensors. The SHT21 is a relative humidity and temperature sensor. The BMP085 is a pressure and temperature sensor and the TSL-2550 is an ambient light sensor. The other two drivers I developed are the CAT24C256EEPROM driver, which allows for reading and writing data on EEPROMs. The TDA-19988 is the HDMI transmitter on the BeagleBone Black. The driver I developed for that chip allows for the extended display information data to be read from an attached display. This will allow the frame buffer driver to automatically configure itself for the display. These drivers allowed me to implement power off and rebooting for the BeagleBone Black, as well as EDID reading and auto configuration in the frame buffer driver for the BeagleBoard XM. I implemented the same dev ITC interface as provided by NetBSD and OpenBSD to enable software to more easily be ported to Minix. I also imported the ITC scan program from NetBSD into the Minix base system. This allows the user to probe the bus for devices. I also made improvements to the ITC scan program and contributed them back to the NetBSD project. In addition, I developed a tool called EEPROM Read, which can read ITC EEPROMs and parse the data. It's used in the startup scripts to detect what board is being used and check if there are any expansion boards attached. That brings me to my next point, expansion boards. Using the tools and drivers above, I developed support for the BeagleBone weather cape. Included with Minix is a weather station web application to show off the features of the weather cape. I modified the demo from BoneScript, making it work without Node.js and without Socket.io by using a Lua script and some JSON. Everything mentioned on the previous slide has been merged into the official Minix repository. To use the fruits of my labor, you just have to use a recent version of Minix. Here are the instructions to get Minix up and running on the BeagleBone Black and the original BeagleBone. For the BeagleBoard XM, see the Minix wiki at wiki.minix3.org for build instructions. Step one is to get the source code by cloning the Minix Git repository. Next, we'll create a .settings file with board-specific settings. Third, uh, we'll run the sdcard image script to build a cross-tool chain, cross-compile Minix, and construct an sdcard image. This could take a while, depending on your hardware. Finally, we write the sdcard image to the actual sdcard. I'd also like to mention the impact of the project. 38 of my commits were merged into mainline Minix and account for thousands of lines of new code. Nine wiki articles were written and posted to the Minix wiki at wiki.minix3.org. If you were to print out each article, it would total 35 pages. 
47 posts were made to the project blog over the past few months. The blog has accumulated over 7,000 page views from interested parties. My YouTube channel, where I posted five project-related videos, has gotten over 1,400 video views. I'd like to thank everyone who believed in me and helped me along the way. I thank BeagleBoard.org for accepting my proposal and providing me with a BeagleBoard XM and BeagleBone weather cape. The hardware really made a difference and allowed me to develop drivers that I wouldn't have been able to develop without the hardware. Next, I'd like to thank the Minix community for the relentless encouragement and help throughout the summer. I'd also like to thank Google for providing the stipend which allowed me to spend the summer working on open source software for the BeagleBone Black. My mentors, Keys, Franz, and Ben also deserve a huge thank you for their time and guidance throughout the summer. Last but definitely not least, there were a couple of other people who were especially helpful. David answered some of my highly technical Minix questions and provided good suggestions and feedback on my design documents and code. Lionel also helped review my code, caught some of my mistakes, and provided great ideas for improvements. Without all of these awesome people and organizations, the project wouldn't have been nearly as successful as it turned out to be. I really enjoyed my work this summer and want to continue working on the BeagleBone Black device drivers for Minix. Towards the end of GSOC, I began working on porting the frame buffer driver to the BeagleBone Black. I'd like to finish that work and get some displays working, including the 4D LCD cape and a normal computer monitor via the micro HDMI port on the BeagleBone Black. Previously, I'd been doing a lot of work on Minix package source. I'd like to get back into that and work on building packages for the Minix ARM port. I'm also interested in helping with testing. I have all of the supported hardware and want to help make each release of Minix ARM rock solid. If you're interested in seeing any of the project resources from this summer, check out these links. If you'd like to contact me about anything Minix or BeagleBoard related, here are my contact details. Thanks for watching!